The following is one of the most baffling true crime cases to date. In many ways, it's like an Agatha Christie story involving mystery, deception, and a modern twist, cryptocurrency. Let's look into the disappearance of Anna Elizabeth Hagen. Tom and Anna Elizabeth Hagen got married in 1969. Tom Hagen co-founded an electric company and began working in property development. The 70-year-old is an engineer, property investor, and Norway's 172nd wealthiest person. Anna Elizabeth worked in a nursing home, and as her husband's career advanced, she started working as a secretary in his office and managed the office cafeteria. On October 31st, 2018, Anna Elizabeth called her son at 9.14 a.m. After that call, Anna disappeared without any trace. It was the beginning of one of the most puzzling cases in Norwegian criminal history. On the same day, at 2.08 p.m., Tom called the police, reporting that his wife had been kidnapped. He explained that he had come home from work and found a ransom note, and that it seemed to have been written by someone who did not speak Norwegian as their first language. According to the note, 9 million euros were demanded to be paid in Monero, a cryptocurrency. The note was extremely threatening and contained detailed instructions on communicating with the kidnappers through coded Bitcoin messages. The kidnappers threatened Tom not to involve the police or there would be lethal consequences. However, Tom decided to call the police. He asked them not to show up in uniforms to keep the meeting as discreet as possible. The police, however, didn't follow Tom's advice and two uniformed officers met Tom at a gas station not far from Tom and Anna's house. The police determined that Anna Elizabeth Hagen's disappearance may have occurred between 9.15 and 9.48 a.m. They considered it an abduction case because of footprints from a shoe of the brand Sprocks and zip ties found at the crime scene. Police also showed the letter to language experts, where it was suggested that it was written by one or several people with Norwegian as their first language, deliberately in poor Norwegian. Tom continued going to work and people described him as reclusive during this period. Because of the ransom letter, the neighbors were told that Anne was away and even some family members were kept in the dark. It wasn't until after 10 weeks of utmost secrecy, Anna's abduction was finally revealed in a press conference. A few days after this, the police released a video where a man was seen walking down the road next to Tom's workplace at 7.36 a.m. on the morning of the abduction. He suddenly stopped and turned around to walk back the same way from where he came. After 24 minutes, another man walked down the same way. It was theorized that these two men may have been staking out Tom before the abduction. The police then helped Tom transfer bitcoins to the kidnappers in the hope that they would communicate back to them. After a few days, they received a reply from the abductors. On November 10th, the kidnapper responded with the following message, little time, quick, or she is dead. The news of Anne's abduction spread like fire. Subsequently, two women appeared on TV claiming they had seen Anne in the back of a red BMW X3 on the day of the disappearance. The police questioned both women, but nothing was found. And after an overall assessment, the police concluded that the BMW X3 lead was a dead end. This despite one of the witnesses claiming that the woman in the back seat of the car was looking at her saying, help me. A few weeks later, Tom Hagen's lawyer, Savine Holden, received a strange email. It was from the kidnappers and was sent through a dark web browser client, Tor. The email said that it would be bad if Tom intended to mess with the kidnappers. After receiving threatening emails, Tom quickly transferred 1.35 million euros in Monero with assistance from the police. This time, the kidnappers didn't reply. In June 2019, police suddenly changed the approach and said that this could be a case of murder. The officer said that there was no sign that Anna Elizabeth Hagen was still alive, seeing the kidnappers never contacted them again, and also because of the organic material that was found on the scene of the crime. The police stated 
that the so-called kidnapping could have been staged to mislead the investigation. The police were now suspecting Tom Hagen. In April 2020, when Tom was leaving for work, he was arrested and charged with murder. However, he was quickly released as there was no real evidence against him. Another man in his 30s was also charged, but his identity was never revealed. Both men denied any involvement in the abduction, and the man in his 30s is believed to have been checked out of the case. Tommy Bruske, the head of investigation, said, A clearly planned deception characterizes the case. As other hypotheses have been weakened, suspicions against Tom Hagen have gradually been strengthened. There was no kidnapping, no real negotiation counterpart or real negotiations. There are indications of a will to mislead the police. Several articles were published regarding the case, and some of them claimed that Tom might have sinister motivations. Witnesses called the police, saying that they didn't believe Anna Elizabeth was kidnapped. They also revealed that Anna Elizabeth seemed distressed before her disappearance, and that they suspected Tom was involved, the motive being marital problems. Tom and Anna's children are all critical of these suggested marital issues. During the investigation, the police found Tom's personal notes from 2016. According to these, the couple was on a brink of divorce, and Tom could lose a considerable amount of money if a divorce were to occur. Tom later commented on this to the media. I think this is strange. My notebooks contains about 17,000 pages and were easily accessible to the police. I don't have anything to hide. I might have written that divorce would always be an option, but who gets divorced after 49 years? According to both Tom's notes and sources, Anna Elizabeth was unfaithful to Tom for a short period of time in 1993. It was found that Tom knew and threatened the man Anne was having an affair with. In October of 2018, 22 days before her disappearance, Anna Elizabeth was at a gathering with many other people. She cried and spoke of difficulties in her marriage with Tom. Witnesses state that they were shocked by this, as Anna Elizabeth was usually very reserved and private. During the investigation, one of the family computers showed a divorce search on Google, performed in 2017. It seemed like Anna was the primary user of this computer. Anna Elizabeth was all set for the divorce, as separation papers were found in the house, signed by Anna only. But these documents were signed years ago. It seems like Anna was either struggling to get the divorce papers signed by Tom, or she was unsure on how to approach him about it. Tom and Anna Elizabeth had a prenuptial agreement, and different lawyers have stated that this contract was twisted in Tom's favor, to the point of it being invalid if taken to court. According to experienced lawyers, Tom could have lost hundreds of millions of krona in court if a divorce took place. It has now been four years, and Anna Elizabeth is still missing. The police have stated that they are optimistic about solving the case, and they are hoping to follow the money to find whoever is responsible for Anna's disappearance. Even though Monero is the only cryptocurrency where every user is anonymous by default, considerable amounts of money will always leave a trace if you look in the right places. But what about that red BMW? Can the police be absolutely sure it wasn't a part of the disappearance of Anna Elizabeth Hagen? Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more bad things and to stay updated on this case and more true crime. Until next time, take care.